Hi there, Dr. Sassy here from Sassy Surgical. I'm gonna to try to answer a question that has been put to me by some friends and relatives actually, which is, am I waiting too long to go ahead and make the decision to have metabolic surgery or bariatric surgery? And this is kind of a tough one because a lot of people are grappling with excess weight and obesity at various levels, and they're working hard at trying to improve body weight and health. And so I've had some people say, you know, I wanna keep striving at this, surgery sounds kind of scary, and um, should I just keep pressing forward? I know there's some medications, if I just get with the right doctor and the right plan, you know, maybe I'll make enough headway and, uh, and I can get to a healthier place. And so my answer to this uh, for someone who I love and care for is that almost always, the right decision is to look objectively at where you are with your age, your height, your weight, and your BMI, and then just look objectively at the data like you might do if the problem was, say, a degenerative hip problem, and your hip was in bad shape, would you try to rehab it with rehab and physical therapy and maybe medications and stretching, or does it need surgery? But instead, what so many people do is they sort of think that this is their fault and they internalize that, well, gosh, if I just ate different and exercised more, then my body weight would be lower. But that's in fact not the truth and it's also not been proven at all in peer-reviewed medical literature as a successful strategy, particularly the higher the BMI rises. So as our body weight rises, it becomes less and less and less possible for us to change that trajectory and reach a healthy body weight. As much as we would all like to believe that, geez, if I just did better with dieting and exercising, that I would somehow get to a healthier weight. But what we've come to understand and what the science clearly shows now in both animal and human research is that our body, as a product of the food supply and the environmental inputs, together with our genetic template, creates a flight plan or a set point for body weight that is pretty hard to change. We can transiently veer off that flight plan, like if we exercise our brains out and dieted like crazy, like the Biggest Loser, but as we see from the NIH study of the Biggest Loser contestants, they all regain their weight after a short period of time, a couple of years-ish. If we also look at large peer review studies where doctors and nurses and teams of people work with individuals in an incredibly intensive way with diet and exercise and counseling and medications, trainers and support people, for example, you can research this yourself, look up the look ahead trial, look ahead. What you find is it, it just doesn't work. And even years into the study with massive funding, we see that the poor people who have been enrolled in that years and years later have not really had any meaningful improvement in any of the important measures of their health. And so what has been lost in those years of trying to do that is usually very significant. And the studies in fact bear this out and they show that if you follow groups of people who are under medical supervision and trying their hardest to lose weight and improve their health and control their diabetes with all the things we're supposed to do, diet and exercise and medications and counseling and everything in between, there is a tick, tick, tick of risk that is going on every year and people are developing the complications of those problems like heart attacks, like strokes, like worsening diabetes, like retinal disease and blindness, like kidney failure and going on dialysis. And the rate of that progression of disease continues unchanged and unchecked. Compared with the people who have metabolic surgery, that rate changes markedly lower. And all of the people in the group who had metabolic surgery, strangely and gratefully from our point of view, have a far lower rate of progression to all of those complications such as heart attack, stroke, worsened diabetes, etc. So if you kind of think, well gosh, you know, at what point should I just sort of say, okay, I get it now, this isn't my fault, this is like a degenerated, degenerative hip or broken hip that needs fixing, uh, at what point should I just have surgery? And my answer would be, if you've given it the college try and your body mass index is over 30, you ought to give some serious thought to metabolic surgery. If your body mass index is over 35, 
Almost certainly that is the only intervention with any realistic chance of changing the trajectory for improved health and longevity. And the older we are, the more uh, unlikely it is that there's an alternative answer that has any effect on our physiology. So perhaps if we're in our teens and our 20s, you know, we sort of give it more time for people to uh, have some change. There are occasional people I've run into over 20 years who were not doing any exercise and who were eating all the wrong things and drinking all kinds of sugared sodas and they got a scare like they were told that they had just crossed over into type 2 diabetes at age 28 and they made a huge reversal in their life's activities and they started exercising five or seven days a week they completely cut out drinking sugared sodas and all kinds of other carbohydrate input and they changed their lifestyle around dramatically so that they were able to make some durable change for the longer haul but that person is really rare. I could probably count on less than one hand the number of people I've seen in the thousands of encounters I've had with people over the last decades where that has been a possibility or an answer. Nearly everyone I talk to has been battling this problem for years and years and years. They have already made the easy changes. They are working hard to find ways to exercise if their body will even let them or they're struggling with taking care of kids and parents and family and holding down a full-time job. And there's no easy answers. And they've already cut out most of the bad stuff that is out there. And so waiting more time carries this drumbeat march of increased risk. So I'll give you an example. I saw this lovely woman today and it turns out when I went in to see her that she had actually seen me for a consultation all the way back in 2007. And she really wanted to have metabolic surgery back then, but for a variety of reasons, partly because of insurance obstacles, they made it very hard for her to navigate through the path to get to metabolic surgery, which is really a tragedy. She did not have it at that time, and she's wanted to get it done, but life has been in the way, and it's not been easy to get done in all these years. But she's here now, and she's really motivated, and it's time to get it done. And when I look through her medical chart and see where she is here 13 years later it's very distressing she has had worsening of her degenerative joint disease she's had to have surgery on her knee and on her hip she's taking five more medications than she was taking back than she was in 2007 and what we can't really measure but we know is true is that this has taken a toll on her organs on her kidneys and on her retinas and on her joints of course and so, and she's also heavier, of course, because we're all gaining weight as the years go by, despite our efforts otherwise. So if I could go back in time, I certainly would have made it easier for her to have metabolic surgery in 2007. The studies show, and my experience tells me, and all you gotta do is look around and you'll know that her quality of life and her physical health would be markedly better, and her trajectory of weight would have been flatter uh, had we been able to do that back then. And so has she lost, you know, 13 years? Uh, I mean, she's still alive, which is good. Uh, her body is, you know, in less good shape. It's taken a toll for sure. Her quality of life has suffered during all these years. Um, so clearly it would have been better for her to have this intervention sooner. But where we are today, of course, we can intervene and have a huge impact on her quality of life going forward. But for most people, think about age, think about body mass index, and kind of drop the notion that this is my fault and gosh, if I just did better, but just think about it more as an objective problem that is a medical, metabolic and environmental problem and that the proven solutions after a BMI of 30 is surgically changing the tissues, which is the only thing we have yet so far that changes the biochemistry that regulates that body weight flight plan. Until we have drugs that mimic that change and change in that whole symphony of hormones that takes place with metabolic surgery, we don't have a way to do it. Just read the Look Ahead trial. See why they terminated it. They terminated it because of futility. That's their author's language. I, clearly that's what I think too, but, but it just goes to show you that we don't have peer-reviewed evidence of something other than metabolic surgery inducing long-term health improvements and weight reduction and diabetes reversal. 
So I hope this was a kind of a helpful discussion if you're sort of on the fence thinking about this. It's always seemed a little uh, kind of scary, but you've thought that you should just keep working at it. If you've been working at it for a while, then clearly the safer, lower risk solution is surgical intervention sooner rather than later. Well proven in peer reviewed journals, certainly our experience every single day, day in and day out. If you find a, an experienced center and an experienced surgeon, um, your odds going forward of improved health and longevity are markedly improved the sooner you intervene with metabolic surgery. And the longer you wait, it's just more risk. So I would urge you to just investigate it, read, learn everything you can, and then make the best decision that you can. I hope that's been helpful and I wish you the very best of health and luck.